Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is Monday, November 5th, 2018, and uh, we're down to three members tonight. We're calling to order at about, uh, what is it? It's uh, 6.35 tonight. Um, Tom is off on, I believe, a business trip, so, um, <coughs> so we've got uh, Scott and I here tonight. And the first item on our agenda is a meeting with our, which we have every year right about this time with our Board of Assessors. <coughs> and we're doing our tax classification hearing. And then I think we're gonna talk about online permitting as well. A little update on that? Okay. Sneak out, and I'll turn these lights off. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, so we can look at that. That's good, yeah. <coughs> Two short PowerPoints. Okay. For your viewing oh, wow. pleasure. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Hey, there it is. Oh, very nice. Okay. All right. So welcome to fiscal year 2019 classification hearing. So each year are we going to feature different homes in Sutherland, and this is right. one of our newly renovated homes on Main South Street. Main, South yeah. Main Street. Okay. So what is the purpose? The purpose is to determine the shift of the tax burden. Um, it doesn't change the total levy. It just determines which class bears the most. So if we, um, the share of the levy for the commercial, industrial, and personal property classes, otherwise known as the CIP, may be increased by up to 50% as long as the residential and open space classes raise at least 65% of what they should have raised without the shift. So what is the process? Well, every five years, which is changed, it used to be three, now it's oh, five. Right. So every yeah. five years, assessments <clears throat> must be at 100% of the fair market value and certified by Department of Revenue, which this was the Municipal Modernization Act, which was signed in 2016 by Governor hmm. Baker. Does it go every five years from 2016 or? Yeah, our next will be 2022, because okay. our first reval was set in 17. Okay. So every year we have to make interim adjustments so that we're at the 100% fair market value and have it certified. So what are the four classes? Well, we have residential. Here's another really uh, redone home here on South Main Street. We have commercial, which are the businesses. We have industrial, and then there's personal property. So here we have um, the impact of splitting the tax rate on an average property. So we have at the 100%, 90%, 85%, 80%, and 75% shift. So that just shows you how drastically it can change. Um, and it looks like I didn't get to put every number in here because I was working on this right up until 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but I got the main numbers in. You'll get the gist of it. So basically, uh, it looks like... Uh, Right now, according to our paperwork, the proposed tax rate would be 1533. And then the, the tax rate shifts with the, each of these percentages so that you can see that the residential rate goes down, but the commercial and the industrial goes up drastically. And there's very few communities in the Commonwealth that have the split rate, and those are primarily communities that have something that offsets it, usually some kind of power plant. Like Irving right. has Northfield Mountain. The Irving's a good example. Uh, yeah. has, a big base. You need a big to base to, to make it worth it because otherwise it's putting an unfair burden on the commercial. Right. Understood. Yeah. So that's yeah. basically that. We don't have any of those things in our town. We don't. So. No. So here we have some numbers. <clears throat> I'm not going to read them all, but you can basically see that the residential um, values have gone up. 4.21%, uh, commercial 39 industrial only 03 and personal property 1.3. So a total average of everything is like up 4%. Uh, just a question for the viewers out there too, like personal property tax, just to, can you give like a little definition of that for folks just so they understand? Yeah, personal property is generally mm -hmm. for um, businesses and it is separate from the real estate so that would be the contents of their business like what your office equipment or something office like that office equipment yep. computers there's a lot of different variables so it's hard to give a really comprehensive answer because there's all kinds of exceptions to the rule but basically it's the contents of what it takes to run a business so if okay. you had a restaurant it would be the furniture 
Your stove, your stove, equipment. Stove, your equipment. Anyway. That's what's called personal property, which is okay. kind of confusing because it's not really personal. It's for a business. It, yeah, business but that's what they property. call it. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Uh, personal property can also be second homes, which we are not a community that really has second homes. But there are some towns, especially like the Cape, yeah. or even yeah. like Charlemont, well, I guess, has a lot of uh, second homes. Hmm. Hmm. So those are actually supposed to be taxed personal property, the contents of the home, because they're extra. Oh, okay. We don't really have any here. Huh. But there are towns that have a lot. So like I said, like the Cape Resort towns, yeah. they have second homes and so the contents of all that are supposed to be taxed separately hmm. Hmm. Huh. so basically um we have the numbers of what we need to raise uh, other sources and the tax levy so that we have an increase in the tax levy but that is also because we have the two hundred thousand dollar override that we voted right and that for. accounts for that but um hmm. when we did the calculations in the spring we didn't have all these other factors in here, and we thought that the tax might be as much as 1550, but it only comes out to 1533, so it isn't okay. as much That's of an good. increase as first thought. Yep. So basically, it's a little over 2% increase in the taxes. Okay. So, just in a summary, uh, taxable value went up 4%, amount to be raised went up 6.38. Proposed tax would, would go up 2.2, so basically a 2% increase. Uh, the difference being at the bottom here, if we show our values from 2018 and our values from 2019, the average home for residential went up, so it makes it look like the taxes are up more than they should be, but it isn't really. It's because the values went up in addition right. to the tax rate. So basically, the average home in Sunderland is around 290000 so the average tax bill would be around 4451 Okay. Makes sense with uh, mm. real estate values going up, mm. taking a big jump lately. Right, so. and so this oh. is just a graphic to show that the, the, if you look at the bar between, there's not much difference between 15 and 18, but between 18 and 19, there's a little more of an increase. So that's our largest increase. You know, it's not huge, but it, it's it's there. You can kind of see yeah. it's a little bit bigger. Okay, and then this just shows our historic tax rates. Um, and the water district's actually going down two cents. So even though we are up from last year, we're nowhere, you know, you can see that there's a, back in 99, it was still higher. Still below the historic high, yeah. Yeah, it was high. And then it kind of went down, and now it's kind of going back up. So this is certainly not the highest we've ever been. And uh, you probably don't have it in here, but I know as a comparative tool, we're actually one of the lowest tax yeah. rates anywhere around in this area because I usually keep an eye on how we we fit yes. in with that, um, which is actually impressive given the fact that when you look at like some of those previous charts, how little are. Uh, uh, how little we have to spread out in terms of like commercial and industrial. Correct. So. Yeah, we had a whole, I didn't put that in here, but I could have, I guess, was a whole graphic when we did the pre-town meeting. Yeah. Was what the other towns actually, it's were. It's a really good presentation, by the way. It is, yeah. Such a nice job. Yep. Thank you. So, yeah, we found what the area towns were, and we were, were like out of, I don't remember how many towns, but we were like third or fourth lowest. We're very out low, of yes. Yep. Out of 29, yeah. So it just tells you it's not it's not that bad. And some with much more commercial property, mm -hmm. too, yes. when you look at it. Yeah. So, so that's, could I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Yeah, please. Um, and we have a couple of pieces of excluded debt that are mm. two years forward. What does excluded debt mean to that rate in the future? So say we wiped out library construction. It's 200 plus thousand dollars. That factors into the calculation for the tax rate every single year. It should, yes, because right. uh, there's a whole, I mean, I don't have that up there, but we have a whole recap sheet. Yep. And it has, uh, at the top, I mean, you have amount to be raised, amount of revenue coming in, and then you get your tax levy. So if we don't need to raise that money to pay, that's going Great. to lower the levy, which will lower the tax rate. And I say that as a, a bit of a softball, Mr. Chair, mm. because we know that there is two, there are large two large pieces of debt coming off of 
the debt schedule, right. I think it's two budget years. So as we look as we look at this, fifteen thirty three, which is still lower than nineteen ninety nine, mm. not as low as two thousand nine, but we got into trouble in two thousand nine, like the rest yes. of the country, yeah. and uh, we're at fifteen thirty three right now, and it seems there's a complement between the benefit that property owners enjoy uh, with the value of their property and the relationship between that and the tax rate. It's not unique in that they are disparate. They need to be disparate because the town has a total value of 364, mm -hmm. about $364 million. Mm -hmm. And to run that piece through the DOR formula and the assessor's work, it's spread out across the owners. Right. And I know there's always that conflict where people want their, for resale, they want their property value high, but for tax sure, assessment, sure. they want it as low sure. as it can be. And you know, it's, Anybody who pays yeah. attention to the local newspaper real estate ads would have chuckled just before town meeting when uh, we were talking about our override vote, there was an ad, enjoy Sunderland's low tax rate. Yeah, <laughs> and I thought that's a pitch, really, in a real estate ad. That's really funny, actually. Yeah, that yeah. Was. Justine, thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, I digress. But there is a there is a there is a relationship between the total value of the town, the total amount that's potential to be raised, and the fact that we still run under our limit. And that's important to bear in mind when it comes to budget season. Not necessarily the assessor's job, except for the except for the declaration of the rate. And that number comes into play in other formulas too, correct. the state and the EQV. That's and correct. Yep. So. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, the bottom line is the board um, wants to recommend a single tax rate. We've had this discussion for a long, haven't we, Jim? For yeah. a long time, many, there's, many just, there's just not enough base that's yeah. Completely set. We don't have a nuclear power we don't plant. Have the power plants, right. or yeah. We don't have any of that kind of large commercial <clears throat> industrial. We don't have that kind of relationship. Right. Uh, I'm sorry, diversity in our base. One thing we also have is a fair amount of uh, property that is set aside, whether it, whether it be APR or whether it be owned by state agencies, which we struggle with through pilot. That's, that's not, not necessarily the assessor's bailiwick, but it's certainly uh, an area of frustration any given year. Well, I think off the top of my head, we have something like 120 or 130 parcels that have an agricultural credit, right. either 61, 61A, 61A, 61B, yep. or APR. That's a really interesting fact, and, and I'm glad you bring that up, if I yeah. could, Mr. Chair. Yeah. The, the reality is there's the, the, there's the tension between quality of life, open space, uh, open agriculture, commercial agriculture, uh, and then what that costs. If all of that property was tied up, uh, not tied up in agriculture, and was a single or multifamily dwelling or a small commercial space, invariably what happens is your operating expenses go up. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there's a cost for the residents to keep that kind of open space relationship, whether it's views or whether it's really good potatoes from Charlie, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. The reality is there's 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 a tension there. Great point. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So we have a motion, Mr. Chair, in front of us for uh, the adoption of a single uh, rate, yep. and the rate is 1533. Correct. That's proposed. Propos proposed, and that is for the budget year, which would be 2020, because we're in 2019. That's right, yeah. It's, it's, it's tough, I tell you. It's always a little difficult sitting in, in, at this table uh, in the reality being in 2018, living in a 2019 budget, talking about 2020. Mm. I'm like, okay, what year are we talking about right now? Which one is it? So in, in the course of the motion, it's for the 2020 <clears throat> budget cycle. But it's also going to be applied to these final, the final fiscal year. 19 bills that will go out in December. Got it. Okay. So a motion to uh, 
accept the recommendation of the assessors for a single rate, and that rate being uh, $15.33. Okay. Um, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Two to zero on that one. All right. Okay. And then Thank you. you. Okay. Want to discuss some online permitting? Yeah, right? we need the lights again. Oh, oh okay. One Thank more you. time. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, I've got this. I uh, put together at 5:30. So, because we didn't know, um, we were hoping that Joe Vinekevitz would be here. Yeah. But he wasn't able to make it. Ah, so, okay. <clears throat> we last year we talked about this through some different vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw software through Viewpoint. And there's something called uh, Permit Pro, which is through Assess Pro. But each of those, they were they they seem to be pretty equitable in their use, but the costs were very different. There was quite a bit of upfront cost to mm -hmm. those two softwares. So then we got a presentation from Point Software, which is what we currently use to generate our bills, okay. tax bills. And so um, the gentleman, Scott, came out and gave us a presentation, I think, last year. But then he came out again just a couple weeks ago for Sherry and Joe and I and showed us again because we really wanted Joe to see it. <clears throat> so basically, he sent me a few screenshots just to give you an idea of what it looked like. So it's called Permit Link, and it's through Point Software. And so I know it's probably kind of hard to see, but... Um, he just sent me, it's going to say all the wrong names, but this is just for demonstration purposes. This is what it would look like to the public. You would click on here, it says permit link, and then it shows what you can select. So you can apply for new, you can view all old permits, uh, or um, it allows your user to see attachments, and you can also pay for permits. And then this just shows you, you would have to have a registered login. Um, to get into any kind of permitting. And then there's all these different options. You can choose demo permit. Uh, these are potential. We may not have all of these, but this is what this particular town had. So we could have a gas permit, we could have a sheet metal permit, we could have a regular building permit, whatever. So you click on that. And then this, it brings you up to an application which uh, the user can type their name in, and some of the fields will be fillable. So if you start uh, yeah, to put yeah. in your address, uh, it'll it only lets you pick from addresses that exist in Sunderland. Okay. So they can't just put some random address. It has to be they'll be it drop does, downs. It does cross check. Right, and yeah. if you start putting it in one place, it'll fill in somewhere else and that type of thing. And then there's a list of there'll also be a list of contractors, licensed contractors to choose from and. So it's sort of in, in the a smart form in that sense. Choices are contractors? I believe so. Okay. Because they register on Because they have to be registered. Yeah. So if you say who it is, Dude. and it should pull up the license. Got it. That makes yep. sense. Thank you. And then <clears throat> this screen he sent me is just showing, which I know it's probably also kind of hard to see, but uh, it just shows um, all the permits. So people can go in and see what the permit is, the permit status, uh, if there's any attachments and stuff, and so it would be very user-friendly. And then this is just a little thing that Joe sent. He couldn't be here. <laughs> so he says, please it's fill the select Joe. board. Yes, I totally right. support the online permitting system. He's Price seems extremely reasonable as well. And we asked for towns that were near us, and yeah. most of Franklin County is in the Franklin County inspection. Oh, so the there's cog. really no one in Franklin County, but Southampton uses it. Correct. Okay. And Joe, that's Joe's fill-in guy, is the mm -hmm. gentleman from right. Southampton. So he talked to him, and he said he absolutely loves it. Mm -hmm. And um, they gave Sherry some pricing, so I'm going to let her just talk about that little piece. Yep, that's what I was going to ask next. Yeah. The pricing is ten dollars per per permit. Okay. So it can pay for itself if we can adjust the costs um, to reflect the increase, so the users are are paying. Yep. For any additional costs, mm -hmm. I don't know if Joe has Joe looked at our um, permit costs and comparison. I'm not sure if he got that far, but because it's been a few years, I since think since we've we looked adjusted, at that, right? so right. it might be you know maybe we could go up five or ten dollars more to cover the costs. Yep. 
not to get too deep in the weeds, is that, Mr. Chair, if I could, hmm. is that a hosting fee or do you actually buy the software and have to have it upgraded and et cetera? Nope. An extension of point. It's just, uh, it's all in the cloud. You don't have to own the software. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's pay as you go. Mm -hmm. It's just $10 pay as so you they go. Just, they're essentially charging a commission on your permits. Mm -hmm. to so instead of uh, bigger municipalities, they have to pay up front. Right. But that for smaller sense. ones, they've come up with, as long as you have at least 100 permits, which we do, we have way more than that, um, because they figure it's like a $1,000 licensing huh. fee. So as long as you have at least 100 and you charge that, they, so they charge a tip, so they'll get their 1000 It's their baseline cost. Right, and yeah. then if we have more, then it's, you know, so that's basically it. So there's no upfront cost. That's for um, support. That's for training. Um, they would give us a license so that we could have a kiosk downstairs okay. oh, that would be so nice. that train yep. people how to use it right we could train people how to use it and so sherry and i were talking um it'd be nice to have the kiosk for people that maybe don't have a computer they can do it online and then it would also yeah. be helpful people could look up the gis our you gis site because a lot of people come in and ask me how to right. use it and i show them on mine but i would be happy to show them on a kiosk sure <clears throat> the public could just view that i mean i know the library is there but if they want to look at a map and then see the GIS on the kiosk, so we would just need a computer and a monitor. I don't think we need any to buy anything new. We maybe could, well, we'd have to talk to them, but okay. I think we could yeah, maybe use good. something that we're going to replace, upgrade, because it doesn't have to be. As long as it's secure, definitely. Right, right. And as long as we can address security issues. Yeah, right. Take an older piece of equipment. That's what I was thinking. And, you yep, know, you just need a monitor retire. and a hard drive just for those two things. Hmm. We feel like Potentially. it will improve the efficiency between internally between departments. Well, that was one of my reduce redundancies next questions, and right. those things, as right. well as making it uh, more efficient for residents who can apply anytime, you know, day or night mm -hmm. online, yeah. and for contractors as well. Mm -hmm. And then it would give the inspectors access to the information when they're out in the field, as right. Right. as well. They, they can even view it on a mobile device. Hmm. which Joe doesn't have a modern mobile device. So I think it'd be nice <laughs> if he had a tablet, he has a flip phone. Yep. But if he had a tablet, <laughs> if he had a tablet, or you could Or even like view, a bigger phone even. Right. Yeah. You could view the whole permitting software on there. Yep. And so like they were saying, if he's out in the field and he sees something is complete, he can do his part. Or if he's somewhere and he says, I don't remember that permit for a shed or something, you could go online and check it out. And then right now he's saying a lot of the issues is just trying to get everybody to sign in a timely manner because you've got to get that piece of paper to everybody. Right. And then there's my part where I need to get the permits so I can enter it into my software so we can go out and make the inspections. But there's always that piece of paper that takes longer. This way I could go on once a week. I could view what permits were issued. I don't have to wait for Joe to photocopy. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of paper. He has paper, then he photocops, and I get the paper. I wouldn't even need any of that paper. I could just view it. I can also get when there's a certificate of occupancy. I don't have mm -hmm. to keep asking Joe. All that stuff could be on there. Can they give you reports based on that? So if you know that you need a dump every week of you know the new permits, is there an option for them to, to give you some so, reporting yeah. off of that? Okay, and he yeah. also thought that it might be able to <clears throat> merge, because I've been keeping Excel sheets of mm -hmm. all the permits. Right. Yep. He might be able to merge that onto here potentially to have more of a history for each property, and if not, hmm. well, we can just go forward. So so residents could go to their property and see, like people are always asking me, they wanna buy a house, can you tell me what permits were taken out on that house? So you, the public can go on there, view a property, see what permits were taken out. You know, because people wanna know, when was the roof done? When were, you know, sure. right. was there new siding? Was there an addition? When was this addition? Somebody right. just bought a house, wanna know, how old is this addition? You know, so I had to go back, I have this amazing Another kitchen tool. and it has no permits on it. Yeah. And that happens too. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, right. So this, this would help track better. And we're thinking that maybe people would be less discouraged mm -hmm. if yeah. they could get their permit online because it's hard when it's limited hours. Sure. That makes good right. sense. It sounds like it's going to make things more efficient, which All is one, of the, one right. of the keys. Flag things yeah. in the system as well if there's an right. issue with a property, yeah, uh, non-payment of taxes yeah. or something. That right. It would be a lot more um, user-friendly for everybody. Just yeah. the tracking ability. <clears throat> yeah, if we, anything we can do to make it more efficient to speed up the process for everybody involved, too, so it, it doesn't bog down, that'll be good. Efficiency is good. Well, as, someone, as a business owner who has used the Southampton software, 
uh, understand the value of it. And there are a couple of other municipalities that use other online software to submit the permits, mm -hmm. the status inspection requests, all that. It's it's very helpful uh, to all parties. That's good. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, could I ask, Mr. Chair, Sherry, could you, if I could have uh, the town administrator reach out to the Southampton town administrator uh, and see just what uh, snafus there are? We always talk yeah. about the benefits. Well, it's like, hey, this say. is the greatest possible thing ever, and then you dig under the hood a little bit and go, oh yeah, except for that. Right. As somebody who works in IT, I know there's going to be some pain right. points in this right. somewhere right. that right. somebody right. has. So right one now. thing that I asked, I said, what if we don't like it? <laughs> no, seriously. That's what a if valid question. Like what right. if we start it? He we said, well, we it. just ask you to try it out for at least 90 days to, uh -oh. to get, well, to get set up. Yep. And then you can get out. There's no penalty if you decide you don't like it. That's no good to know. Again, because right. it's driven by the permit, but by the individual application. Mm -hmm. Right. Their, their cash flow for the software and support is by each application. Right. So I, from a fee-for-service perspective, that's one the town isn't hosting, and you would hope to gain some measure of efficiency. And efficiency and benefit aren't always the same thing. It's important to bear in mind we're talking about efficiency here. Yep. And the other thing is um, we can just start out with the building, the electric and all that, but we can also add on Board of Health because they have their Title sure. Five and all permitting. that stuff, yep. which they are yeah. on board with. Yep. But we don't have to do fire it all at once. Inspection. We right. can do it gradually. Ease our way into Potentially, it. Potentially, I don't know, maybe the fire department would want to get on. or But so th those can be added on. at a. There's no That's charge to, to have it done later because okay. I asked that too. Do we have to get it all? Is it cheaper to do it all at once? It doesn't matter. They so can be yeah. added on as we go. Yeah. Well, and there's no, yeah. there's no costs to them really in, in that, you know, I mean, they're, they're keeping it on their server. So it's not like they have to come out and install software on each department. Right. And everything. It's all so. stored in the cloud. Yep. It's all cloud-based. Interesting. So. <clears throat> so straight to Moscow. Good. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. This is something we can explore. Is there a timeline with a recommendation here? Something we do for the next fiscal the year? fiscal year. We were hoping, yeah, to get going. Okay. okay. I think he said it might only take a month or so to get it set up, whereas other towns would be longer because they're bigger. Sure. But for for the amount that we would have, it didn't sound like it was that long of a setup period. Nice. So we're thinking of the end of like next July. Is that what probably want to have a decision going into the budget cycle? I would think, yeah. yeah <coughs> which makes sense. Which puts us in February, March, as we propose forward, even though there would not necessarily be an increase. It's still really a change in policy. We also need that feedback from the uh, building commissioner as well. Right. And if what we makes for a policy, you can't just spring it on both the electorate yeah. as well as people working inside of town. Right. Give people a heads up. And then right. also, if we have to adjust the um, permit fees based yep. on the cost yep. for those. Exactly right. And, uh, maybe to do another pre town town meeting and we could roll That's it out so to um, the yep. voters Good then idea. so they That's could great. get a taste of what it is. Yeah. Put a little. Nice. Little sample kiosk out there or something, yeah. Perfect. Mm. Um, now you said the public can get into that. So, um, are we going to maybe put a link on, on the, our website on the website for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fabulous. And that's how it works. Actually, the city the city of Chelsea is very much the same way. Whether it's hosted or not, it's we're doing some projects there as well. And frankly, all of the state of Vermont is web based. The entire the entire state. If you want to take an electrical permit. You just go to the website. Just make sure the internet doesn't go down. I don't understand trouble. that. <laughs> but, yep, but that's that's good. <clears throat> All right. Thanks so much, Assessor. Okay. So we have Appreciate a vote that. for a single rate. We've got another year. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we know we established uh, a value of the town of about $364 million. We have a vote for a rate of $15.33. And then the tax bills go out when? This is the first time. This is end one of, of the few December. times you see everybody in the yeah, same spot. It should be out by the end of the year. By the end yeah. of the year. And these, again, because we have uh, two steps in the billing. This is the actual or this is the this estimate? This is the actual final bill. Final bill. It's important the to bear that in The preliminary bill is just that, preliminary. And yep. it's the last year's tax right. rate. This one, once the tax rate is set, Yep. Then this is the final bill. They go out in December. They'll be due in April. Any exemptions or abatements are due April 1st, the same time as the bill. Yeah, great. That's good for folks to know. And again, that's a shift now 
four, maybe not mm. quite five years now from the, from the split billing. Mm. It used to be one bill at one time. We had the Christmas surprise, and, yeah. and now that's that we got rid of that piece. So, mm. thanks for everything you guys do. It's great stuff. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. <laughs> we'll just take a second while we're switching over here and um, do our minutes from last meeting of October twenty second. inside of these minutes again um, a point that was raised is that coming this coming July it's hard to think about that but that's kind of the schedule <laughs> we live in it's coming this coming July uh, celebration ribbon cutting down at the um, Riverside Park walkway and beyond that some North Main Street reconstruction and the ZBH are giving us an update uh, move to accept the minutes of 1022 uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We adopted sewer there. rates at that meeting I and know. now real estate rates at this meeting. It just sneaks right into budget season <laughs> at that part. Here we go. I saw our budget books downstairs. So. I know. The budget books have shown up. The so people who don't go in the office, it's like, oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. And with that mention of sewer stuff, that leads us right into our next topic, I guess, right? Yes, I, I don't know what this is really to about so yeah. well, well first of all thanks for coming yeah, appreciate and, it and there's no there's this isn't this isn't in no way shape or form any kind of a gotcha on the contrary well that's it, good um, before we do this is mm -hmm. there any chance so in two weeks mm -hmm. i'm supposed to come back yeah yes and i'm having knee surgery or knee replacement is coming in a week. So you can jog in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is there any chance it can be done today? I don't know if that application's in place for today. Um, for the extension yeah, of hours? I yeah, saw, we yeah. have the application yeah. and it's making its way through department heads. Okay. I know Joe has I and Steve have both um, yeah. said it's okay with them. I believe Eric, Chief D. Metropolis, weighed in as well. Yeah. So, and Steve Ball. Okay, so, so we're just going through the done. process. Yep. So this to to the to your point is the question about the application for an extension of hours for New Year's yes. uh, Eve into New Year's Day. At night till yeah. midnight. Exactly midnight. right. Twelve one. Right, and you guys usually come in for that every year. So yeah. so, so that said, knowing that the application has at least one more set of eyes that have to be looked at it, can I make a motion that we approve the extension of hours for Lou Heron? Pending the final review, this would be from the chief of police. We haven't seen it from writing. We've heard it. We just right. haven't yeah. seen it. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Just let me know. Exactly right. I mean, Barbara can, you know, but barring any complications. Sure. Yeah. Sure. My neediness of. Right. Yeah. And the following Monday or whatever. There hasn't been an issue in more than a decade, so. In uh, uh, fifteen years. Right. So we'll 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 we'll, we'll uh, make that motion. Uh, and I'll second that in the name of making government more efficient. We start go. right here at home. So. There you go. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. There. Good luck with the knee surgery. Oh, yeah. Again, it's three weeks, second. you'll be second. running. Is it? Uh, That's I'm great. Glad I only have two legs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you always, go. Always tough. Uh, so. The downside of being a restaurant owner. Chef. Yes, uh -huh. on your feet all the time. Yep. That's exactly right. That is true. So, Rich. We're going to talk tonight specifically about kind of grease trap and best practices. Yes. Again, we don't have, we're not we're here to imply, we're not here to do any of that. We're just talking like, well, what do we do about it? And I think this may be a catalyst out of what came out of this branch. Yes. There was a, this was roots, to some, to some extent, yeah. roots infiltration, but also a change in use. Yeah. Okay. But um, the real reason is, you know, I'm sure you're aware on the 20th of September we were called out for a sewer blockage. Right. And um, part of that is you had already tried to clear it through Fletcher's sewer and drain, and they had cambered it down, mm -hmm. and they determined that there was a blockage, but it was just beyond your surface yes. in the sewer. Right. Okay. Got it. Got so, it. Um, and that anyway, consequently backed up to you. Yeah. So this is an output from uh, Blue Heron, Correct. but also uh, they have a maintenance practice, or we, uh, they have grease trap facilities. Mm 
Yep, they do. And we're trying, we're trying to understand what the best practices in and around those grease traps are. Yep. Right? How do we go about that? Well, um, well, I discussed it with Cindy yep. just to determine is there an inspection schedule, um, are there any reporting requirements, mm -hmm. yep. and didn't really get any definitive answers. Okay. To I mean, I can tell you what our practice is. Okay. Okay. Which yeah. is we clean our grease trap every week. You do. Okay. We do. I mean, we can put that on a schedule, but so that one would see it. But mm -hmm. it's always we've always done that. Okay. Yeah. And the, you know the reason I'm asking is. Prior to that call out, there was another call out maybe 18 months, two years prior mm -hmm. for something similar. So I'm trying to put one and one together and try right. to avoid these call outs because right. they're a nuisance for you, they're a nuisance for us right. also. Obviously, we don't really want to, we don't want to get to the point that we've got to go and operate in an emergency circumstance to try to clear something. Right. You know, we'd rather get ahead of it. And know? what we do now is that we actually have Fletcher come in twice a year you do okay. um, to clean the line to just to clean the line i yep. mean you all run that building it's it is what it is it mm -hmm. can back up easily the backups have always been um because of what people put down in the toilet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know we take our grease and we have a all all the grease that looks like grease goes into a big tub outside mm -hmm. and then it's picked up yeah and it you know, recycled. Yep. So, uh, what we've what we've also done is I suggested to Bob that you know we do our annual cleaning. That line right in front of your right in front of your business was never part of our annual cleaning. Um, I, I, did, I don't. Do who are you? I don't. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was going to say we should probably do some introductions. <laughs> so I'm um, Deborah. Chief operator, chief okay, operator for the, for the plant. <clears throat> uh, apologies, we thought, frankly, that this, this had been done before. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. think, I mean, you, I could, you look familiar, yeah. but, but I'm not sure we've met. So. Yeah, sure. But um, <clears throat> what we're going to do in the future is we're going we're gonna to add that short piece to our annual cleaning so that the part that's owned by the town, the actual main, is going to receive a cleaning in that area just to try to avoid this in the future. We yeah, don't, I, we don't want it any more than anybody. No, else I mean, it's a I, nobody wants it. Yeah, it's a nuisance. Yeah, we'll keep doing the the cleaning. We've always done it because it's <coughs> it's just the best practices, mm -hmm. and uh, and he does a thorough cleaning of it. That does not mean obviously nothing is going to get through. Right. Uh, and I don't know beyond that. Other practices. If, if, yeah. if um, the only other thing we wanted to discuss, um, and when when you Bob's been the chief operator of the plant for how many years? Thirty one years. Thirty one years. So he's he's been there. He's little been there little familiar with it. Yeah. Uh, little familiar with it. Yep. <laughs> and um, when your operation went online, um, it discharges to the pump station. We're behind the old fire station. Right. And we maintain that well, well, and we constantly screen material that isn't going to go through the pumps to mm -hmm. the plant. And um, after you came online, obviously you've got you've got a grinder pump, and you discharge a lot of a lot of material into the sewer main. All of a sudden, that volume of material that we're screening went up substantially, obviously. Um, the only issue for us, other than the labor involved and the disposal, is a lot of that material is probably organic, um, can be composted, done something, something beneficial to come out of it. Our only, our only means of disposal is to bag in trash it at that point uh -huh. in time because once it touches <laughs> wastewater, it's wastewater, right, right, right. and it can't be, can't be composted legally can't be disposed of any other way. It goes into a trash bag and into a dumpster. And I just would like to investigate whether or not composting could be used. A lot of... Yeah, that's fair. I, you know, when we first opened, we did compost. Okay. We had a farmer come and get, you know, just the, the vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, then that farmer stopped doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really just getting all the pieces on board and maintaining. 
farmers still want to do that, and so on and so forth. The amount of uh, work that's added to the workload at that pump station is probably three, maybe four hundred pounds of solids extra per week. Hmm. And if we put that in bags and yeah. haul it out, that's probably eight, yeah. eight or so bags. And it started the day you guys opened. You know. I'm, not, I'm not surprised. So is if I could if I could miss the chair, you guys yeah. you guys got fixed screens coming in, grates coming in, yeah, right? Bar rack, yeah. bar racks. Yeah. And what you're so what you're seeing is uh, organics that aren't tri that are related specific to a restaurant, right? They're not they're not they're not they're not, they're not, they're not sanitary. They're not they're not traditional organics. Okay. It's probably ground. It's more like a mush. Yep. Yeah, that makes you sense. Know, it, I mean, some things yep. go into the and well make. and settle. Yeah. And they get bumped out. Yep, yep, yep. And other things just float. Yep, yep. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, interesting. A uh, very short sidebar working at the uh, Longmeadow lift station, which does the whole town. It's amazing how the geometry of those things play out. They end up showing up in the a, a larger, larger scale. You guys know they show up as like golf balls tennis balls they're yeah. just they're, they're just organics and there's like why a sphere I, I never understood that but it's always interesting to go into a well and go wow spheres everywhere what is that it goes like that's, that's, yeah exactly yeah. exactly right yeah. it just it's then to accumulate and anyway long story short <laughs> i spent way too much time in sewers <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah well yeah. i know you, you got me by a, a fair amount of years bob i totally yeah. get it but like thinking like going forwards too, if we have new restaurants coming online, let's say we you know get a couple opening up, like I guess like in terms of things we want to talk about with them is, do we need to add if they're if they're on a sore line, do we need to make sure that that section is part of the annual cleaning, you know if it isn't already, mm -hmm. um, and then maybe we suggest you know to anybody new you know first try to do things like composting if you can first and you know some other things to help minimize that. Um, There's a lot of restaurants. What is it, eight in town? Getting there, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Think and about do that. they all hit the substation? Or? No, no, there's two the, pump stations. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, there's, there's three on this one. So it, it, I, guess, I guess it begs the question from the, mm -hmm. we talked about the lift station's perspective, right? Opportunities to minimize some of those solids. From the business owner's perspective, what does that look like? And I don't know, not having I, worked in kitchens. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's, you know, there are other complications. Correct. Where would you keep, um, you know, we, you have to, we have to be able to get that out of the area. It's right. gonna, It's a board of health issues board. on oh, your yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. 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 Certainly There's a number of things. Increase the, mm -hmm. the vermin. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, mm. I mean, that's the big problem. That's the, I mean, even in home composting. <clears throat> right. Right. Yes, you know, keeping right. out the critters. Those, uh, in Montague Center, it's like, whoa, look at the mm -hmm. rats over there. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy <laughs> rats. Yes. Healthy <laughs> well right. fed. A lot of um, a lot of the haulers, you know, the trash haulers, and um, they deal with your recycling too. A lot of them have actual composting bins that they offer to restaurants and businesses that will generate compost, um, and they're. They're covered. I don't. I, right. I wouldn't say they're sealed. I guess I, yeah, I'm gonna I mean, stop short of saying that. Just because it has a cover yeah. on it doesn't mean it's sealed. I should, talk to, I should talk to a couple of the farmers if they want any of it. Mm -hmm. they're, yeah, they're maybe they could work on something like yeah. that. Um, I mean, certainly there's, you know, there's just a ton of waste. And, yeah. No. Um, kind of the nature of the beast. If it was a, I mean, I had a whole. If money was never. <laughs> You know, the issue, a whole thought about how restaurants should figure out, you know, a whole system that goes to uh, a tank mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, a sealed, ta a sure. sealed tank, sure. yeah. you know, uh, and then can be pumped out at sure. some point. Sure. It's all organic matter. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's not this, this. Oh, reality. Right, right. Uh, and it's one thing if you're a full farm to table restaurant where you have your own farm, sure. it's easy to recycle that, that back. But, right, but uh, most of them aren't that way. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, uh, the access, I think, to good organic 
I mean, Sunderland's filled with farms, right? right. I mean, that's one of the wonderful pieces. We just, just you heard the conversation earlier about you know how much open space we have and how much of the, you know, it impacts the rates of all the property owners. Case in point, yeah, you know. So. Uh, and uh, you know, it might be, you know, something that maybe the mm -hmm. town could do is get the farmers and restaurants and people together, and is there a way that we could? You know, I mean, that it's it's a community sort of bigger problem. Like a community too. composting kind of thing or something? Yeah, there, huh? there was something to Look into that, yeah. think about that. Could because miss the best of... use for it is, is that it goes to farms. Correct. And that would help the loading on the treatment. Mm -hmm. right. Well, yeah. hmm. could that could... happen? So yeah. I ask, Mr. Chair, that uh, we have, have uh, share reach out to Janamine in the solid yeah. waste, Jan solid waste district suggest. and say, you know, yeah. what goes on. We, we participate uh, with a very successful uh, organization, the Franklin County, Franklin County Solid Waste District, and their people are just so creative well, about great. how to, how to yeah. close a circle. It was a sure. couple, three years ago, they started with a pilot program for a plastic waste on uh, farmlands and... I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tons. There's a lot of that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, something, mm -hmm. you know, creative like that. Yep, yep. Is great for the community on so many levels. And, Correct. And great for, uh, you know, I, I think myself or other business owners and employees who care about that. Sure, sure. You know, it's, it's, we all see the waste. I mean, I have a thing of like, okay, You know, I'll give a bonus to anyone who I don't want to see vegetable waste. I want to see a stock made. made yeah, exactly. Stock. Right. 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 You know, let's so let's it up. at least get <clears throat> because there's just you know food waste is huge. So sure is. So rich. Uh... And you know, besides having a, a of course we. Um, much of, you know, before dishes even get washed, it goes into trash. So okay. when the dishes yeah. come up, most of that is not going okay. into the, uh, into the, uh, into the grinder. Yeah. grinder. Okay. You know, we're, it, it's just because it's a lot easier sure. and wear and tear on the grinder. We just got a new grinder. Uh, okay. So that's also a practice that yeah. we have. Well, that's good. That's we could maybe I could propose, yeah. Mr. Chair, that we reach out to the solid waste district. Uh, we um, coordinate a couple of the areas of concerns from the treatment plant operators. Yep. I think that makes and sense. And then extend that information to all of the restaurateurs in town like the business who are connected to, as well as. Uh, Even if you're not, I think. There, yeah. There's some, yeah, there are others as well we can talk to about. Waste entering the wastewater treatment plant. It doesn't have to be a CT Connect, but it can be a written correspondence, maybe to each of the each of the people who are connected to the system, yep, who are each commercial, other. not necessarily <clears throat> residential, yep. uh, who do any kind of conversion. Areas of concern, pretty simple. Can we minimize this? Can we minimize these impacts? And then take this um, particular lift station, whoever imports into this lift station and talk with uh, the solid waste district about what those best practices would be. Because it's, it'll, it's gonna have an impact across the district's costs and that's spread across all of the users uniformly. It's not assigned individually. And I think that's important to bear in mind. Again, as I said earlier, it's, it's, we're not, this isn't a no, gotcha I, I, in any way, shape or form. It's straight brainstorming. Right, and that'll give us good ideas going forward too right. for any new businesses coming right. in and stuff, so. So three to four hundred pounds ish a week. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, and that's that straight land incorporation. And again, the challenge when we get into a single stream at that point is it has to be handled very differently. You can't just you can't just throw in the back of a truck anymore. It doesn't work that way. Right now, it goes into the dump. Correct. Okay. Great. Right. Uh, so, what do you think? Sixty to ninety days. Like get, should, yeah. oh. get into the holidays. You don't want to be bothered at the holidays. It's busy enough. Yeah. How about how if we get to like January and we'll talk about it again? Okay. Uh, now I'll be out of. I will be leaving in the middle of January. I'm going to Mexico? Uh, no, I'm oh. going to Mexico. But I will be in the south. Okay. Uh, 
for a while. I mean, I'll come sure. up a little bit, but, but you can always get me. Yes, we, okay. can, we can coordinate. Yeah. And again, this is information exchange, looking for a practice that helps minimize any kind of impacts at the lift station. And, and the, you know, we'll, we'll think about things as well sure. on our part and huh. see what we can nice. yeah. do. Makes I, perfect won't, sense. I won't be here. I'm Retired. No, you're not. Oh. Yes, it's only 31 years. Come on. <laughs> I'm 69 years old. You got, oh, you you got, got me beat by a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how, many, how many new knees do you have? How many what? How many new knees? I don't have a new knee. My wife's got one. Okay, so she's got you beat <laughs> by a You got her by oh, a I year. Will have you beat. You got her beat by a, a knee. Yeah. Exactly right. Trying to avoid that. Very good. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for the input tonight, and we'll close this loop uh, again with the treatment plan operators corresponding with the business owners and also working with uh, the Solid Waste District to see if there's any, the most creative people when it comes to the waste stream. That's They're great. so yeah. good. Yeah, because yeah, it's not like it's a problem that only exists in Sunderland. Right. So. Exactly uh, right. It's, no, it's that, definitely could some, that could get a big ball rolling. Right? Exactly. Well, like, exactly. Yeah. For right. a variety of, yep. variety of yeah. business owners. Yeah. Or maybe there is something out there already. That there might even be, who knows, exactly. something, you know, some kind of grant or something yep. down the road yep. that yep. would really assist in something like that. Well, that, that I, I circle back to that uh, uh, agricultural uh, plastic waste. That was a single-year grant that has now turned into a full-on program oh because it, was, it, it became a no-brainer. Yeah. Right. Like, what are we going to do with all what this? What do you do with all this plastic? <laughs> yep. Now, right. will I see everyone on Sunday? You'll see at least me. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. yep. I'll be there. Okay. Yep. You going on Sunday? No. no? <laughs> going Sunday? So there's. Uh, this is a great segue. Tracy, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'll let you do the pitch. No, that's, well, the, uh, we have our 300th um, gala at Lou Heron. Um, and thank and you. Yes, that's right. Appreciate it. And we're uh, helping with the solid waste. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't look we, Monday. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We'll be generating enough of that probably, right? Um, what are the times um, for that? I believe it starts at 6. Yeah. 6 o'clock. Yeah. There, right. right. there are just under 30 tickets left as yeah. of Saturday when we picked up our tickets. My wife and I picked up our tickets. You can contact uh, Tracy Zachary. Uh, you can also go to the 300th website. Uh, it's seventy-five dollars a head. Music, so, yeah. uh, toast, proclamation from the legislature, live dancing, right. big and band food. sounds. Yep. It's a hell of a deal, it and is. you can't go wrong. And the reason it's on that date, it's our actual birthday. That's it's right. Really, it's it corporation. Well, that's yep. great, and it's lucky enough that Monday's a holiday. Bingo. Well, it's also a nice way to kick off the holiday season, you know, ease yeah. away. And, 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 you know, for those of us who will be cooking big dinners, and it's a chance to not cook. Exactly. For, for right. change. Well, we're honored to, to be doing it. So. Well, thank you so much for all your help. Absolutely. We'll close this loop uh, and share the information uh, more broadly. I think it's important to bear in mind that as, as these kinds of um, uh, collaborations come up, it's not just the treatment plan or an individual business or the board or sewer commissioners. You know, it's, it's a larger uh, field that we can actually tap for good information. So it's, right. it's a great, great. thing. Thank Thanks you. so much. Best Thanks. of you, sir. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. And you let us know whether Barbara needs to come or not. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We, have a, we have a motion and voted contingent. Unless somebody says no, I'd expect that would not be a problem. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, um, move on to our Board of Selectmen updates. Um, we are, the only thing I have is um, we're scheduling, going to be scheduling a personnel committee meeting to start looking at our, um, the salary reviews and things like that in our study that we're working on. So, and then we have that two November weeks. November 26th. 26th. Yep, so we'll get that ball rolling. <clears throat> If I could, Mr. Chair, the um, capital planning capital planning committee met last week with the architect who did our building survey, reviewed uh, the agency's program. I'm sorry, the agency's submittal of the building assessment, yep. which is the baseline for a program for capital expenditures for the town over the next 25 years. We had some outliers of 30 years, some. Uh, more urgent areas within the first five years. Our next steps are we're meeting 
in concert with the planning committee. I think it's the 13th. Um, to uh, propagate our um, spending plan yeah. for the next 25 years. That was capital planning with uh, through Sherry's effort, getting us uh, secured grants with the FR COG to work on uh, financial planning for capital. So we are looking at the debt schedule, ret retiring debt schedule, bringing on capital requirements, not necessarily in a debt format. Uh, see what that looks like over the next 25 years. Uh, we have we had a couple of hours of review with the architect. Uh, the punchline is the vast majority of our building's needs are not imminent. However, the def by the sheer definition of by the very definition of capital, the reality is you got to plan for it. Well, and th I think you know th to some of the goals that we're always trying to you know, take the noise out of things yep. and plan better great point this is this really you know you look at the numbers and you're like wow you know but right. it gives you a much better picture of what's sure. actually going on rather than suddenly being surprised the way what that yeah. happened and we have to deal with that and there was one conversation yeah. it was um it was uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek and it's like well we're gonna spend two I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a number up we're gonna spend three million dollars over the next 25 years that's true but you're not gonna proposing to build a building Right. Exactly. You're proposing on keeping all of your assets in tip-top shape. And anyway, long story short, that meeting was last week. There's another meeting in the next in the next right. two weeks uh, to follow up and and uh, and then push that in. I see that the Frontier uh, rep for union negotiations and the Union 38 reps have been announced. Those meetings have been set. I'll be attending the Frontier meeting, uh, and I would say that anybody who's been in and around the newspapers in the last week, uh, recognized that there was a uh, incident with an officer, uh, town of Sunderland, a cruiser, uh, yeah. and some uh, livestock, and right at the Amherst line, and not just our cruiser, a cruiser and a tractor, tractor trailer, trailer truck. So this is this is this is some pretty pretty serious stuff. The bottom line is uh, there's no injuries. Yes, which was, uh, the, I was very surprised given the. A cow at night. It was a very moving right. experience. Right. right. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to smash into big mammals at night. No. It's um, never good. That said, you know we'll continue to pursue what goes on with the value uh, reclamation, repair, or totaling of a cruiser. But thankfully, there was no injuries to the officer. Uh, Amherst is doing the investigations as it happened so at the Amherst line. So yep. perfect. A whole other set of eyes. I want to thank uh, the chief, uh, Demetropolis, for his work in getting the, both the vehicles secured as well as uh, the level of, of candor uh, when it comes to uh, these kinds of accidents. Yep. They're just accidents. That's just the way it is. So, okay. never know when a. About the grant for the police. Oh yeah, and uh, is that for <laughs> our next item there? Yeah, yep. fabulous. Is that one? Well, that'd be town administrator update as opposed to yes, me reading true. it. It's all right. <laughs> so the chief actually applied for uh, through through the office and was able to get a grant through uh, local law enforcement equipment and technology through the state house. And uh, this is 100% of costs, 50% of annual BPV grants. And I thought it was for like $12,000. 20000 Oh, 20, 12, 20, 20, 20 you know, $20,000. <laughs> Active shooter kits, uh, some hearing impaired assistance devices, and a large go kit and training for uh, school safety. So again, I'd like to thank both uh, the chief as well as the town uh, administrator for keeping their eyes out for uh, those kinds of grants. Again, that's another 20 plus thousand uh, dollars that isn't on the tax rate that isn't a program that needs to be funded in the future, but also identifies needs uh, in the immediate sense. This board, on the subject of grants, this board has historically looked at grants and said, what are the long lasting impacts, right? Does this mean a half hiring, and then in right. three years we end up with a full-time position? That's not the case in these. These are both programs, 
and materials that can be managed with existing staff. So congratulations to the chief and I want to thank him personally and from the board's perspective for keeping uh, his eye out for the department as well as for the total community. It's all part of good management practice. Exactly. Yeah. And some of this actually comes off of comes off of the capital plan, frankly. It, it does, you right? You know, some of the access pieces come off. I mean, the, the chief has been very clear about um, what areas of impact not only these grants can have, but what represent essentially one time or you know decades long costs. So excellent point. I think a lot of the grants that we've been getting can be attributed to good planning and a lot of that planning comes through the BRCOG and so mm -hmm. I think it's important to acknowledge all the work that they do. Sure. Yes. Um, yep. Some of the, the last couple of grants that um, we had success with were um, products from the housing production yep. plan yep. and um, from the transportation yep. and circulation master plan. So without good planning documents, Great point. we can't do what we do. And that information and, and those documents are provided through the COG. So thank you to them for all that they do for us. You know, it's, it's, it's a, if I could, Mr. Chair, I'm glad just you, you raised that point, Sherry, because those quiet meetings where they're only the participants who are appointed and the professionals uh, who either work for the town or work for the COG are in there and there's very little public yeah. in those spaces. Those are invariably the planning meetings and these grants, the Complete Streets grants, the housing generation, you know, our applications for housing assistance, those kinds of things uh, look favorably uh, when they're scored as part of the grant application. Mm -hmm. right. Those quiet meetings and that relationship with the COG and the really wonderful uh, both staff as well as motivated citizens we have here in town make that happen. And those meetings are like this meeting right now, us and oftentimes not even FCAT. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Nat, caught her yeah. napping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's true. And I, it, you know, a lot of this stuff may not be, it's not the exciting, uh, roiling part of politics that you see so much in the news, but it's like, you know, we really, uh, this board has, since I've been on it and since before and since, you know, as far back as I can recall, has been really trying to improve the efficiency of what we do and everything. And I think, and I think that's important than leaving a lasting legacy of efficient management because that's, yeah, the, the, this is the part of government where the rubber meets the road, where, you know, we actually, we can't put things off for years and, you know, argue about them. We have to get things done. Sure. So, when, I think uh, it's important. When we go to the pre-town meeting meeting this year, I'd love to see a scorecard, I'm sorry, a tally sheet, not a scorecard, a tally sheet of the grants received in the last 30 months. I know, that would be, I'd be a very, and the amounts, and to see, because oh, it's, it's be a little, a little, a little yeah. eye opening to go. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's oh, like, huh? Things that make you go, huh? Good governance isn't isn't wrestling. No, that is true. <clears throat> it's just work. Yes, <laughs> and plenty of it. Yeah. There's no shortage. Um, do you have any other updates? No, for you? not for me. I'm sorry. I well, just won the street light project. We're ready to move That's forward right. to implementation with the board's approval for the um, layout, yep. the design layout. Yep. So I know you took it's a look fun. and. Yep. Well, I was going to say uh, thanks uh, thank to you, Scott, Scott for looking at <laughs> pouring over those uh, exciting area of expertise. CRI <laughs> index numbers, and CRI and index numbers, plan. and photometrics. So people beam uh, patterns. People <coughs> hate bad lights. It, you know, but I would say it makes a huge <laughs> they, difference. They stand the right out. Light. Yep. Hate bad lighting. Yep, that's true. <coughs> if you could move to accept the yep. design layout submitted by real term. Sure, move to accept. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So that'll be a, a nice, um, another notch off of our things done about where we're switching Perfect. over from our lighting to, first of all, owning it mm -hmm. ourselves and switching over to much more efficient mm -hmm. and, and better quality LED lighting. Um, and, and we've also learned from past mistakes with some of the stuff that we've done at the school and things like that. So that's, which is good. And what works and what doesn't work. So Could I think I, that'll be good. Could I ask Mr. Chair, uh, Sherry, with respect to insulation, uh, according to the contract, there is 
uh, warranty for materials, not installation. Installation is separate. We have to begin looking for a service relationship with uh, someone because the utility isn't anyone we call anymore. Right. right. So we know we have a bucket truck. I think it would make sense for us to, whether it's intermunicipal with another agency mm -hmm. or whether it's in the private sector, develop what those kind or reach out to other municipalities to say, well, what does it mean for annual service? I, I look at the central register all the time. I look at it yeah. once a week. Every week it comes out. And there are a lot of those service kind of contracts that are spelled out, whether it's for electrical or welding or whatever, annual service. Mm -hmm. So I think that having the fixtures installed is one thing. Changeover is important. Realizing the benefits of the reduction in electricity cost is, is the third. But because we own them, we also have to be able to replace, repair, et cetera, et cetera, ongoing maintenance. Yep. So. We're part of a procurement with three or four other towns, Dalton, Williamsburg, Sunderland. I can't remember the other one. Mm -hmm. There's four. Mm -hmm. yep. So I'll check in with them to yep. see what they're doing as well. I did reach out to Gil, who contracts through an intermunicipal yep. agreement with Amherst. Yep. Amherst helped us out. I remember hearing yep. something about Thank Amherst. Thank you, Amherst, for that. Yeah. And as well for you, Appreciate Sherry, it. being creative with that. And, and then I on. reached out to Greenfield to see if they could help us out mm -hmm. when we okay. just had that problem. And uh, they contract out... Um, privately to Palmieri Electric. Sure. So. Okay. So again, when we look at this next stage, we have to figure out what that service arrangement is. Right. And it may not be expended on any given year. And it may be expended completely in a given year, just for the nature of the service. I figure it, given the product, it probably Correct. will be a little yeah. erratic like yep. that. Yeah. Long periods with nothing and then an occasional. Correct. Okay. Um, so when I see under our new business, we have a couple of votes here. Our first one is to establish a gift account for our early childhood playground. Is this the same language as the Riverside Park gift account? Um, the school is starting to receive donations towards the early childhood playground. Mm -hmm. They're trying yeah. to raise some private funds to maybe help with CPA or grant funds. Mm -hmm. And um, so we need a place to put the funds. So is this the creation of a fund account? And how is the accountant with this? It would be to establish a gift account that would be under the jurisdiction of the board. OK. Move to create early childhood playground gift account for Sutherland Elementary School. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Two to zero on that vote. And then we also have a vote to establish a gift account for the Sutherland Riverside Park. Um, Same format. This one we do have the policy for. Um, we voted to amend it at the last meeting, meeting to right. allow the Pathways Committee and the board to Got be it. the overseers. Yep, yep. Um, we did have a donation recently say, yep. um, that could help to begin to fund that program. So move the creation of a gift account for the Sunland Riverside Park as amended from our last meeting. Uh, second. All those in favor? Hi, hi, and thanks to our first uh, contributor for that. that was very much appreciated. <clears throat> It'll be a nice way to get that rolling, and it's all part of the, you know, when you look at all these little individual pieces, they, you know, you, you don't mm -hmm. get the big picture, but it steps back, and you know, we're trying to do a lot of um, nice things to further the quality of life around here. So, um, <clears throat> I think that ends our. Regularly scheduled program of the <laughs> evening. Um, I would like to point out that um, I heard something about an election going on uh, in the really? neighborhood. Yep. So tomorrow is voting day, and all I can do is implore you, whoever uh, you want to vote for, to get out and vote um, because when we think of big turnouts, we'll be lucky if we push past 50%. And this is just the only soapboxing I'll say is, is that. Uh, we send our troops all over the globe to um, foster democracy and to uh, protect other countries' rights to vote, and yet we don't even broach 50%. So it, uh, and I've never had to wait more than five minutes to vote since I've lived in this town. 
And um, we usually you spend more time talking to your neighbors at the voting poll than you do waiting and voting. It's a nice way so to connect with your it neighbors. It is, it is, exactly. <laughs> so um, I would just implore you, get out and vote because that's one of the critical pillars of democracy and uh, keeping things going. And it is government uh, of the people, by the people, and for the people. And if the people don't work, the government doesn't work. So. That's all important, and that's all I'm going to say about it. So polls are open at 7 a.m. Well, that was I was just going to say 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> exactly. And in case you don't know, it is over at the Sunderland Elementary School. So, and there will be no school, I believe, in session tomorrow. So there shouldn't be, um, it, you know, you won't have to be fighting the normal school crowds. So that's that's important. Um, no quotes tonight. No, oh. no, no. You've been you've been all over it. I was I was going <laughs> to. I was going to quote something that, anyway. Oh, go for it. No, it was okay. It was, it's completely, <coughs> completely germane. So, uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, call us out at. Uh